Okay, uh, uh, now we move to the second aspect of probability, uh, namely uh, inferential statistics, which is concerned with the computation that an uh, that something will take place in the future. Now, our lesson today is a survey of probability concepts and counting rules. Of course, uh, probability theory, as you can see here, is the science of uncertainty. This is the main concept, or this study, or this science, uh, is the science of uncertainty. Probability, uh, when we uh, use the term probability, actually we mean likelihood or a chance. So the words likelihood and the chance means the same thing as probability. So probability is the likelihood of an event occurring, taking place in the future. The probability assumes any number from zero to one. Probability, of course, when we compute the likelihood that something will take place in the future, we have to come up with a certain value. That value could be zero or could be one, or could be any number between zero and one. So probability assumes any number from zero to one inclusive. It could be zero, or it could be one, or it could be between zero and one. It describes the likelihood that an event, that an event will occur. So probability is defined uh, that it is the likelihood that an event will take place. As I already mentioned, when I said or when I uh, said something about inferential statistics. Now, as I said, it could be the uh, probability can be expressed as a fraction or as a, a, a decimal. So you could say, for instance, the probability that something will take place is uh, uh, 10 over 20. Or you could say the probability, you can express that as a decimal. The probability that something will take place uh, uh, is 0 0.1. So therefore, a probability can be expressed as a fraction or as a decimal. Uh, probability of 1 means that something is certain to take place. When the probability is equal 1, that is 100%, uh, this means that we are uh, completely certain that that something will take place. However, when the probability is zero, it means that uh, uh, you know the thing will not take place. It is unlikely that it will take place. So, a probability of zero means that the thing we are talking about is unlikely to take place. It's impossible to take place. However, a probability of one means that we are surely, uh, we are very certain, we are very sure that the thing will take place. Of course, here when talking about, uh, when studying probability, we're going to uh, basically go through three key words, namely experiment, outcome, and event. Uh, we said that there are three key words involved uh, when studying uh, probability. Uh, is there are experiment, outcome, and event. What actually do we mean when we say experiment? Of course, experiment is a chance process that leads to the occurrence of one and only one of several possible results called outcomes. For instance, uh, when you toss a die, uh, when you toss a coin, for instance, uh, of course, uh, you come up with uh, either a tail or head. One possible outcome. However, either you, uh, that it could be a head or tail. Okay? This is uh, an experiment. When you roll a die, of course, uh, there are, the die consists of six faces. So when you roll a die, you either, uh, if, uh, you either come up with one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six. Okay? So, when you ask, for instance, uh, the students in a class, whether they would purchase or buy uh, a mo the, the, the newest mobile at a certain price, this is an experiment. This is an experiment. 
uh, outcome is an outcome is the result of a single trial of an experiment. Okay? When you roll your die, you come up with one or two or three or four or five or six. If you come up with one, this is the outcome. The outcome of rolling a die is one or could be two or could be three or could be five or could be six. The tossing of a coin, uh, when you toss a coin, this is an experiment. Uh, the result that come up from tossing a coin uh, uh, or flipping a coin is an outcome. Event is the collection of one or more outcomes of an experiment. Of course, the event, it could be one outcome or could be uh, some or a group of outcomes. For instance, uh, tossing uh, or rolling a die. Rolling a die, we know that uh, we have uh, six possible outcomes. From one to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, uh, the event could be one is the event. It could be uh, one event. Another event could be uh, the uh, odd numbers, uh, you know, that we get when we uh, roll a die. Uh, namely, one, three, and five. This is an event. It's a collection of one or more outcomes, okay? Assembly space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. Let's say we toss a coin. We have two outcomes, two possible results, two possible outcomes. The sum of all outcomes is called the sample space. Uh, if we uh, roll a die, we have six possible results or six possible outcomes, namely one, two, three, four, five, six. The sum of all these possible outcomes is called the sample space. So I have an example here to illustrate the concepts explained uh, in the poll. Experiment, for instance, uh, rolling a die or tossing a coin. Okay, this is an experiment. Another uh, experiment, example for, ex for an experiment is like asking uh, you know, a certain group of people whether they like this, uh, you know, uh, pen or not. This is an experiment. Asking those students is an experiment. Sample space, when you roll a die, is one, two, three, four, five, six. The sum of all outcomes when you roll a die is called the sample space. Uh, tossing a coin. The sum of all the outcomes when you toss a coin uh, or flip a coin is head and tail. Head and tail are the sample space. Uh, the outcome, one outcome is one or two or four. This is an outcome. It is a, a single, uh, uh, you know, uh, result of an experiment or a trial of an experiment. Uh, event. Uh, for instance, we can have an event that consists, we can have an event that consists of one outcome. Uh, for instance, here, one event is this one. This is an event. Or it could be the odd numbers when uh, rolling a die, namely one, three, and five. Or it could be, uh, you know, another event could be the even numbers when uh, rolling a die, namely two, four, and six. Two, four, and six. Two, four, and six. This is also another event. Uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, a three day gram uh, is a device that is used to, uh, you know, find all possible outcomes of an experiment. It's another way, of course, is another way to find all possible outcomes of an experiment. So a device, a, a tree diagram, is a device consisting of a line, of line segments originating from a starting point and also from the outcome point. 
it is used to find all possible results or outcomes of an experiment. So in order to understand how to use the tree diagram to find all possible outcomes, let us give an example, okay? Here we have an example. Use a tree diagram to find all possible outcomes or sample space of flipping two coins. Here, in order to facilitate our work, we're gonna use T to denote a trial because we know we have two possible outcomes when we toss a coin or a flip, flip a coin, either hit or tail. So we're gonna denote the T to denote a time, uh, to denote tail, to denote a tail, and H to denote a hit. So let us use a three diagram to find all possible outcomes when we toss two coins, okay? Now, first, since there are two possible outcomes uh, when tossing a coin, so we're gonna draw two branches from a starting point. This is starting point here, and we're gonna draw two branches. And we're going to label them head and tail because we have two possibilities. Okay, when we, uh, you know, toss the first coin. So we're going to label them head, and the other one is tail. This is, this is here, first coin. Okay, this is the first coin. We have two possibilities, head and tail. So what we do, we draw branches, two branches, from the starting point here. Okay, one we label, the, label it head and the other one tail. Now, since there are two possibilities for the second, you know, if the first coin is head, okay, because we have two possibilities. Say the first coin is head when we toss it. Okay, there are two possibilities, uh, you know, for the second coin when we toss it. Uh, so we draw two branches from this starting, this edge, from this outcome, two branches. And we label them head and tail, head and tail. So this is here, second uh, coin. Okay, second coin. If the first coin is tail, when we toss it, then there are two possibilities for the second coin when we toss it. So we draw two branches from this point here, T, two branches, and we label them head and tail. Head and tail, right? So here we have, of course, here first coin, and here, of course, the second coin. Now, what you do, now we count or we trace through all these outcomes, all these, uh, you know, points to find all possible outcomes. So what we do here, we have H, H. We have H, T. We have T, H. And we have here T, T. So what are what is the sample space here? Or what are all possible outcomes? So I'm going to say here sample space is equal head, 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 tail, and let's see here, head, 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 tail, tail head and tail tail. So we have basically four outcomes in this sample space uh, when we use the three diagram. Uh, now uh, we move to talk about uh, a very important concept uh, in probability theory, namely the uh, complementary events.
what actually do we mean when we say uh, a complementary events or complement? Uh, the complement of an event E is the set of outcomes in the sample space that are outside event E. So we have a sample space that consists of all the possible outcomes of an experiment. So here we're talking about the complement. We're talking about the outcomes uh, that are not included in the outcomes of event E. So uh, this is the, uh, you know, the complement of uh, event E. So E contains some outcomes. So when we talk about the complement of E, we talk about the outcomes that are, that are not included in E. They are still in the sample space, but they are not included in E. This is the complement of E. So here, in order to facilitate our understanding of E and its complement, what we did, we denote, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, we denote, of course, uh, tilde E, red, not E, uh, we denote the complement of E by tilde E, which means, or red, not E, or by E, uh, 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 e bar, red E bar. Okay, you have a bar above E. So when we use E bar or uh, like this, till the E, uh, which uh, read not E, we mean the complement of E. Now, of course, in this chapter, we're going to use this symbol, uh, which is not E, to denote or to mean the complement of E. Uh, now, uh, we have a very important rule uh, that we will use using the complement, uh, uh, which is called the complement rule, which says that the probability of event E is equal 1 minus the probability of not E. And the sum of probability of E and the probability of its complement is equal 1. We could say probability of E plus probability of not E is equal 1. From this, of course, we can find the probability of E or the probability of not E. Now, notice that this rule is important because sometimes uh, it is easier to calculate, uh, you know, the probability of an event taking place, uh, the probability of an event taking place by finding the probability of it not taking place by just subtracting the result from one, okay? So for instance, if I want to calculate the probability of E, okay, I can uh, calculate the probability, you know, by what? Well, subtracting the result from the, uh, uh, the probability of not E. Now, Notice that the events E and uh, not E are mutually exclusive. Because why they are mutually exclusive? Because the occurrence of one, okay, uh, means that none of the other events can take place at the same time. Okay, so uh, the outcomes in event E are not included in the outcomes of not E. Therefore, both events are mutually exclusive. The intersection between them is zero. Okay? So, since E and not E are mutually exclusive, then probability of E plus probability of not E equal one. Now, of course, we're going to illustrate this by Venn diagram. Uh, we usually uh, can represent uh, the probabilities using a Venn diagram. Venn diagram uh, is a device that was developed by a British logician by the name Venn. Uh, let's see how we can use uh, this device, the Venn diagram, to represent uh, probabilities. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is Venn diagram is basically uh, is a rectangle. This is Venn diagram. Okay. 
this is the area inside this rectangle represent the probability of event say A. The area inside the rectangle represent the probabilities of all the other events inside the sample space, which can be represented by PS is equal to 1. So S is the sample space. S sample space. Now we can represent uh, the probabilities of a complement using the same concept, Venn diagram. So this is here what you do. This is the rectangle that represents Venn diagram. Okay? This is the probability of event A. Okay? And the probability of event not A, the whole probability of not A, consists of all of the area inside the rectangle but outside the event A. This is here, probability of A. See? This is here, probability of not A. Probability of A is represent is a circle. Probability of event A is a circle inside the rectangle. The probability uh, of not A, it is consists of all the outcomes inside the rectangle but outside event A. Okay? So here as you can see, these are initially exclusive. Therefore, probability of not A is equal to 1 minus probability of A. Why? Because the probability of the sample space, which is the events inside the rectangle, is equal 1, because it is the probability of the sample space. So therefore, the probability of not A, which is the complement of event A, is equal 1 minus probability of A. Here, of course, we give uh, an example of uh, the complement rule, using the complement rule. Uh, of course, say this is the example. Say that the probability of a person owning a car is 0 0.2. Find the probability that a person doesn't own a car. Now, as you can see, uh, we have here two events. Uh, we have the event of uh, a person owning a car, and the it is complement. Okay, uh, these the the these events. Uh, constitute the sample space. Therefore, the event of owning a car, uh, owning a car, yeah, uh, you have here uh, owning a car, this is an event, and uh, it is complement, of course, not owning a car. These two events constitute, these two events is equal sample space. Therefore, the sum of the probabilities of owning a car and not owning a car should equal the probability of the sample space. So probability of this plus probability of this is equal probability of assembly space. This probability of the assembly space is 1. So therefore, the probability of a person doesn't own a car is equal probability uh, does not own a car is equal 1 minus probability owning a car, which is equal 1 minus 0 0.2, which is equal 0 0.8. Therefore, 
the probability of the complement of this event, which is only a car, is equal 0 0.8. Here, we're going to talk about some rules for computing probabilities. Some rules for computing probabilities. We have special rules, we have addition rules, and we have the multiplication rules. Let's now focus upon the addition rules. We have two types of addition rules. We have first special rules. To use the special rules of addition, the events must be mutually exclusive, which means there is no outcome in common. No outcome in common. That is, when one uh, event takes place, none of the other events will uh, take place. Okay? So here... must be mutually exclusive. So to apply the special rules of addition, uh, we should have the events uh, mutually exclusive, that is no outcome in common. Okay, and the rule says, say if we have two events, A and B, so the probability, probability of A or B is equal probability of A plus probability of B. Okay, this is using the special rules of addition. And to use the special rules of addition, you should have mutually exclusive events. Now, the other uh, rule of addition is the, uh, uh, called the general rule of addition. General rule of addition. Of course, in the general rule of additions, we, we don't require that the events be mutually exclusive. The, the events could be not mutually exclusive. That is, there's something in common. Okay? So, uh, here, we do not require the events to be a mutually exclusive. So, probability of A or B is going to be equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. Probability of A and B is the joint probability between events A and B. So we use the general rule of addition to calculate the probability of either A or B, of course, when the events are not mutually exclusive. But now we're going to apply the uh, addition rules of addition uh, with this uh, example. Uh, this example says that a sample of employees at XYZ firm is to be surveyed about a new health insurance plan. The employees are classified as follows. Classification, we have supervisors, uh, event A, number of employees in supervisor is 60. We have maintenance, event B, the number of employees in maintenance in this event B, 80. Uh, production, you know, the Department of Production, the event C, the number of employees is 120. Uh, the uh, 
in the Department of Management, uh, the even the, the number of employees is 70, and the uh, Department of uh, Secretarian, uh, of course, it's in the event E, and the number of employees in the Secretary Department is 70. So we have here a total 400 employees. We have 400 employees in this company. Now, uh, the question, of course, is as follows. What is the probability that the first person selected is either a supervisor or a production, uh, a production? What is the probability? Of course, either the supervisor is uh, Either this uh, employee that is selected is either a supervisor or production. Can't be in both. Therefore, the events are mutually exclusive. So we have to apply the special rules of addition. So let's apply the special rules of addition here. Okay, now uh, A, I uh, use special rules of addition. So probability of A, supervisor A, or production C is equal probability of A plus probability of C. C is the event of production. A is the event of supervisor. So probability of A or C, either supervisor or production, is equal to probability of A plus probability of C, which is equal. Probability of A, we have 60 employees in the Department of Supervision. So we have to divide 60 over 400 plus. We have... How many employees in the production department? We have 120 employees. So we have to divide 120 over the total 400. Therefore, we get here 460 plus 120, which is equal 180 over 400, which is equal 18 over 40, which is equal 9 over 20. This is, uh, you know, uh, this is the probability of A or C is equal 9 over 20. Now, the second part of question A says uh, not in maintenance. What is the probability that the first person selected is not in maintenance. So here we're talking about the complement. Okay, using the complement. Okay, let us erase the answer of the first answer of question A. Okay. So probability of not in maintenance. Maintenance is what? Is B. So your probability of not B is equal one minus probability of B. Using here, use the complement rule. Was the complement rule. So, probability of not B is equal 1 minus probability of B. Probability of B, we get 8. So, 80 over 400, which is equal 100 minus uh, 8 over 40, which is equal 1 minus uh, 1 over 5, which is equal 
5, 5 minus 1. So probability of not B is equal 4 over 5. 4 over 5. So probability of not in maintenance, maintenance is B, is going to be equal 4 over 5. Let's erase that one and do the uh, uh, problem five. B, part B, okay? B, it says, draw a Venn diagram illustrating your answers to part A. Part A. We have... Part A consists of two uh, other parts, I and R, a double I. So let's draw I here. This is the Venn diagram. This is Venn. Diagram, we have, uh, of course, we have, uh, of course, supervisor. Here, supervisor is A. And we have B, of course. And uh, so, what's our production? Production is 120. B, C. As you can see, the circular area of A, which represents supervisor, is 60. How about the circular area of C, which represents production, is 120, is double. Therefore, the uh, circle of C is bigger than the circle of A, of course, because the probability of C is much bigger than the probability of A, is double the probability of A. That's why the circle of C is double the circle of A. Now, what about the uh, Venn diagram for not in maintenance? Not in maintenance, we draw it this way. We draw a circle, and we draw what? Not in maintenance. Maintenance is B. So we draw a B over here. And not in maintenance, we could draw B. As you can see, uh, not in B is the complement of B, which consists of all outcomes that are in the rectangle, in this rectangle, but they are outside the circle B. Okay, now, uh, C are the events in part A, I, here. Complementary or mutually exclusive or both. No, they are mutually exclusive, as you can see. They don't have anything in common. A and C are far away from each other. They are not overlapping. Therefore, they are mutually exclusive. They are here, or we say mutually exclusive. What about are the events in part A double I here? Complementary or mutual exclusive or both? They are both. Okay? First of all, they are mutually exclusive. This is the complement of B. They are complementary. And those complements are mutually exclusive. Therefore, it is both. Okay, are the events in part A are complementary or mutually exclusive? Or both? We say they are both because they are first mutually exclusive and second they are complete okay. uh, now we're going to talk about the other rules uh, uh, of computing probabilities namely the rules of multiplication uh, now to find the chance or likelihood or probability of two events happening we use the rules of multiplication we have two rules of multiplication. We have the special rule and the general rule. Let's talk first about the special rule of multiplication. When we use the special rule of multiplication, it's required that 
the events are independent. The events, the two events are independent. Now, what actually we mean when we say two events are independent? Two events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not have any influence on the probability of the occurrence of the other event. What actually do I mean by when I say this? Of course, let me give you an example. Let's say we have two coins. Okay, I roll uh, one of the coin. Of course, I roll it or I flip one of the coin or toss one of the coin. I get either hit or tail. However, this getting hit or tail, uh, if I toss, if I toss or flip the other coin and I get a hit or tail, the getting hit or tail it does not has not been affected by uh, you know uh, the occurrence of the other coin when I toss it. That is the getting hit or tail when I toss a coin is not affected by the occurrence of the other coin when I toss it. That's it. Therefore, these events are independent. In other words, the occurrence of one event is not affected by the problem, is not affected by the occurrence of the other one. The probability of the other event is not affected by the occurrence of the first event. That's why we say these two events are independent. Okay? So when we have two events, or more than two are independent, then we use the special rule of multiplication. Okay? So the special rule of multiplication is that we say the probability of A and B occurring is equal to multiplication of their probabilities. Okay? If we have a three independent events, A, B, and C, then the probability of these events occurring, that is the probability of A and B and C occurring, is equal to the multiplication of their probabilities, that is, probability of A times probability of B times probability of C. Uh, let me give an example of the special rule of multiplication. Uh, say that a coin is flipped and a die is rolled. Find the probability of getting a hit on the coin and a four on the die. On the die. So as you can see, the events here are independent because uh, when uh, uh, flipping a, uh, when uh, uh, flipping a coin and getting hit or tail is not affected at all by rolling a die and getting a four. They, they do not affect each other, so they are independent. The occurrence uh, of the event of getting uh, you know, uh, whether uh, in getting ahead is not affected by the occurrence, the, by the occurrence of rolling a die and getting a four. Therefore, here we have independent events. Therefore, once we have independent events, we use the special rule of multiplication, which is the probability of A and B or here, actually, the probability of hit and fall. The probability of hit and fall, this joint probability, is equal to the probability of hit times the probability of fall. The probability of hit, because these, when you toss a coin, uh, the outcomes are equally likely. That is, the probability of hit is the same as the probability of tail. One half, one half. Therefore, the probability of hit is one half, and also when you uh, roll a die, we have six uh, outcomes, and because they are equally likely, 
the probability of each outcome of those six outcomes is one six. Therefore, the probability, the joint probability of getting a hit and fall is equal to the probability of hit times the probability of fall, which is equal to one half times one six, you get one over it one. This is the uh, joint probability of hit and fall. Now, we move to the second rule of multiplication, which is, which is the general rule of multiplication. Of course, using the general rule of multiplication requires that the events are dependent, that is, not independent. Okay? Now, uh, two events are said to be dependent if the occurrence of the first event changes the probability of the occurrence of the second event. I will give an example in a second, once I finish this. The general rule of multiplication, therefore, is used when the events are dependent. The probability of both taking a place, that is event A and B, for instance, is probability of A and B is equal the probability of A times the probability of B, given that A has occurred. Probability of B, given that A has occurred, is called conditional probability. Now, uh, let's talk about the second rule of multiplication. We said that the first rule of multiplication dictates that the events are independent while the second rule of multiplication, which is the general rule of multiplication, dictates that the events are dependent. So what actually we mean by dependency? Okay, I already stated that. Now let's give an example to illustrate the concept of a dependency. Uh, say that we have seven cans of soda in a cooler. Three of the cans are seven up, and four are Pepsi. A can is selected from the, from the cooler. The probability of getting a 7-up is 3 over 7, because we have three cans that are 7-up, and the total number of cans is 7. Therefore, the probability of getting a 7-up is 3 over 7. And the probability of getting a Pepsi is 4 over 7, because we have four Pepsi in that cooler. Therefore, the probability of getting a Pepsi is 4 over 7. A second can is selected from the cooler without returning or replacing the first. We selected the first, we are not returning back to the cooler. Now, the probability the second is 7 up depends on whether the first one selected was seven up or not. So the probability that the second is seven up is equal to two over six if the first can selected is 7 up. We said the first was selected and without returning it. So the probability that the second is, is 7 up equal 2 over 6 if the first can selected is 7 up. The probability that the second is seven up is equal three over six if the first can selected is perhaps so one will be less you know the 
uh, the cooler will contain one less. Therefore, the total number or the total cans, the total amount of cans will be six in either case. But however, whether the first selected was seven up or Pepsi. So as you can see here, that the probability of the second, uh, you know, depends on the first. So here, what we say we said is that dependency will change the probability of the second. Okay, now we move to talking about contingency tables. Of course, what actually do we mean when we say contingency table? We're going to use this one when we solve problems uh, later on. It is a plan, it is a plan, or a catalog that simultaneously, or a cross tabulation, that simultaneously summarizes two variables of interest and their relationship. Okay? Example of a contingency table. Let's say a survey of 100 individuals classified each as to gender and the number, the number of lectures attended last year. As you see in the table below, this table here, each respondent is classified according to two standards two, you know, standards, what are those? The number of lectures attended and gender, whether male or female. So this is the table, it's called contingency table. We will see that in some of the problems when we solve them later on. As you can see, lectures attended, those individuals who were surveyed they can answer zero lectures. How many ones attended zero lectures? In other words, they never attended a lecture. Men, we have 20 individuals who are men. 20 women did not attend lectures. 20 men did not attend lectures. The total number of individuals is 20, is 40. Now, those individuals who have seen or attended one lecture uh, we have 15 men we have 10 women and the total is 25 those who have attended two lectures or more we have 20 men we have 15 women the total is 35 so the total number is 100 the total number of women who have, uh, you know, uh, were surveyed is 45, and as far as men is 55. This is actually what we mean by contingency table. So when you see this table, you will, you know, right away understand that it, it is a contingency table, and you will solve the problems regarding the data included in the contingency table.